Welcome back. Uh, still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're set to move into our first major conversation this morning. The Nigerian Employers Consultative Association uh, has raised the alarm uh, that the nation's economy is on the brink of collapse. They, they've warned that spiraling inflation, rising energy costs, uh, a scarcity of forex as well, foreign exchange, the dwindling value of the Naira, amongst others, are bleeding the nation's economy. The Director General of the organization, NECA, Mr. Wale Oyerinde, lamented uh, the economy was under the weight of almost a comatose aviation sector, a stuttering education system, rising debt, depleting foreign reserve, and uh, rising fuel subsidy expenses, amongst others. Uh, the continuous depreciation of the Naira to the dollar has generated lots of talking points from financial analysts, economists, and individuals from all walks of life. The rapid decline has led to forecasts that the Naira could fall to as low as 1,000 to the dollar if urgent measures are not taken. Now, although the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is Nigeria's apex bank, is working to halt uh, the bail for consequences such as free fall may engender, the measures have not been as effective as intended. Among measures uh, applied by the Central Bank of Nigeria include stopping the sale of FX to uh, Forex Bureau operators in 2021, uh, selling only to commercial banks in a bid to stop the fall uh, of the Naira. However, earlier this year, the CBN also announced it will stop the sale of Forex to the commercial banks in the country at the end of 2022. Now, is there any hope of this situation improving anytime soon. I uh, are glad to see you have joining us this morning, a certified metaverse expert. He's reaching us from Wari, the Delta State uh, City, and uh, he's Dominic Rume Uriri. Dominic, good morning to you, and thank you very much uh, for your time. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Um, do you agree with this, um, this analysis and the, the fears expressed by the Director General of the uh, Nigerian Employers Consultative Association who is saying that the nation's economy is uh, on the brink of collapse. Sure. You know, one of my favorite quotes as a financial analyst is that currency is actually the lifeblood of the economy. And when I say that, it means that currency directly affects the way people or industries like the manufacturing industries are able to bring in goods and the, if the price of effect is going up, you can see that the manufacturers will not be able to get goods on time into the country that will be at a very subsidized rate. They might not downsize some of their employment. And that will also bring in a total hardship to employees. Because the particular increase in FX price is ensuring that manufacturers cannot get goods. And it's also ensuring that they will actually downsize so that they can accommodate and save some costs to be able to continue production. Because you see, the thing is, it boils down to a policy and a supply factor. And when I say a policy and a supply factor, the CBN has actually done much to be able to refocus the forex supply into the hands of actually needed. And that's the reason why we're bringing out some of these particular policies. And you can see that there is abuse from people in the society in terms of arbitraging some of the dollar, and then we can have the Naira rate set an official rate of 4 17 in the bank. And then for you to be able to get access to that particular type of dollar, you need some special permission that you need to send into the bank for them to give you access to that particular rate of dollar. But then you also see the parallel markets in having excess dollar at a rate that is at premium to what the treasury is selling. Now, if you're in an emergency, a particular request that you are giving to the bank might not fly on time. And what if you need that particular dollar on time to do something? So we have what is called a widening in the gap in terms of the rate that the CBN is now selling and the parallel market is selling. Because there is no enough supply of this particular dollar in the economy as we can see things like the petroleum sector having to take so much money from the economy. And this particular outflow of 
effect out of the country is increasing this particular supply and scarcity right now. And that's the reason why a lot of things like right there's things like domestic and international trade prices going up. It's like tuition fees, difficulties to pay tuition fees at the moment, and which means that if this cannot be done, we cannot see capacity increasing. You can see assets on strike. So a lot of people are going out of the country to be able to further their education. And because of the particular scarcity, we cannot do that. And it's actually affecting so much. Uh, we, we've seen, you know, the the effects uh, or uh, uh, let me say we have a case study in question of how, you know, uh, the U.S. dollar can really run out in a country and it can lead to uh, very difficult economic fortunes and uh, even civil unrest that can topple a government. Let's look at, at what happened in Sri Lanka, where the country so heavily uh, dependent on imports ran out of uh, forex, foreign exchange to be able to afford the goods he needed to keep the country going, and uh, it led to civil unrest. And uh, do you foresee, I'm not talking about the civil unrest now, but do you foresee a Sri Lanka situation in Nigeria in terms of the proportions of economic meltdown? The truth is Nigeria has enough capacity to survive it. We must understand that it's not as if Nigeria lacks economic activity, activity internally. But Nigeria does not have enough sources to generate revenue. And that is why we're begging for a diversification of the economy. I mean, you know, prior to now, in the city, we had cash commodities that were supplementing for bringing revenue into the country, which means that oil is not bringing enough money. And the price of crude oil is going down or falling because of things like the Ukraine and all of those things. We can have other shock absorbers like cash commodities backing up the stability of the dollar. But in today's 21st century, we can see other things back up the dollar like intellectual property or skill sets that are able to generate revenue or FX revenue into the country. Like we can see the CPN actually um, proposing against cryptocurrencies and blockchain as a technology. And you can see that this particular technology brings in a lot of in terms of what has been actually drawn out of uh, for the money that they feel is being lost out of the FX transaction sector. So things like skill sets can ensure that you can see a software in $10,000, $30,000, $100,000, $50,000, $100,000, and $70 million into the country. Projects that they are completing outside, and then they can be easier to be able to make some of it that are happening in this particular country. So we must not diversify the economy only, cash commodities, um, agriculture. We must also ensure that we start building innovation hubs, just like what Vrem is doing, and what we are doing to be able to ensure that we develop this set of African entrepreneurs in blockchain technology, see that they are now in foreign reserves that can actually augment for this particular type of scarcity. And we can see that the government can also regulate the BDC in the sense that we, let's say we have about 5,000 BDCs, which is like technology available where you can have the data of all of these BDCs. Because the problem is that these BDCs are selling this particular um, asset at premium rate, which cannot just be monitored by the um, CBN because they don't have all of the surveillance equipment to be able to do that. But a strict regulatory policy to be able to see that all of these regulators are in one place and they may be even revoking some of the license of of these regulators that might be selling crazily above the rates and also ensuring that these particular apex banks that they want to use to give access in terms of the um, supply of effect to the country, the apex bank will be able to actually meet up the demand for this particular supply of dollar that they want to give. If we do that, then I think the case, I know that the case of Sri Lanka will not befall us. Because if we, if we want to look at it in terms of the fact that we need to augment debt, maybe debt, maybe we have debt, I want to be able to pay back some debt. We can leverage on things like, we can do levy instruments. Let's say something like NMPC now can declare their shares and make it public. And people can be able to buy and we can use those revenue to reinvest into the economy, which brings back dollar into the economy. So there is really a lot of things we can do that can avoid the Sri Lanka.
All right. Uh, the, the, the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, which manages the, um, the, micro, the macro economy, uh, with its policies, its monetary policies, for instance, has been um, uh, been 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 making some moves. You have, um, for instance, the Central Bank of Nigeria uh, saying to uh, uh, you know to BDCs, we're not giving you uh, U.S. dollars anymore. Um, do you think that affected uh, you know this this situation of for FX availability, uh, you know, positively or negatively? Yes, it actually affected me. And in the, in the positive way. You see, um, uh, Dominic, can you hear me, please? All right, we seem to have a, a network ch challenge um, with our guest. Dominic, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you very well. All right, yeah, yeah. So we lost you at a point. Maybe you could just start from the top. <laughs> okay. I said, yes, it actually does affect in terms of the fact that you cannot just tell a statement like that from somebody that is running the operating things at that particular level. You know, when you say things like that, people will be scared to on, maybe give their dollar out and then they get caught arrested so there will be high tendency that there will be enough scarcity because people will hold back their dollars and then when you don't know what the stability of the economy creates you know that as of today we can have dollar at six before the end of the day we can have dollar at six thirty or forty arbitrage in this but the arbitrage opportunity or arbitrage type of opportunity this would ensure so that people would hold back their dollars so yes those have a very massive impact. Hmm. All right. Um, uh, the the security situations, you know, some have pointed that as well. Um, you know, do you think that uh, the security situation in the country in, in a way has affected this whole dollar shortage issue or you think that probably doesn't have anything to do with that? Yes, it has. You know, when your country's security is very stable, you would attract a lot of foreign direct investment into the country. And as of last data I checked, Nigeria has been epilet foreign direct investment for the past six years. We used to have up to 10 billion, 100 plus billion in our foreign investment. There was a time. <laughs> but as of today, we have about 200 million in our FDI. And you can see that this is because of the epileptic security in this particular country, investors want to be certain of their investment. Peace is a necessary driver of growth and a necessary driver of foreign. It attracts foreign direct investment into the country. So you cannot understand the importance of us having a very stable, peaceful environment for us to increase this foreign direct investment. People are actually also acting as of this particular exodus of money or foreign direct investment out of this country so we need peace we need peace we need the terrorism to stop what what, what about the heavy dependence of the country for the total dependence of uh, nigeria on imported fuel uh, which is a, a major driver of different uh, economic indices you know including transportation it has an effect on the cost of food it has an effect on the cost of goods and services um, you know, some have said the uh, fuel importation situation is a major factor uh, with the price of oil going up in, in the global markets. You have a country that produces crude oil um, not being able to benefit from the increased price of crude oil on the international market. Because what we, we make from the sale of crude oil, we have to now use it to buy petrol back into the country. Or if you look at the um, oil for... Uh, crude for petrol uh, regime, that means that we are giving out our crude to get back uh, uh, petrol in return. So um, I want you to talk about the fuel importation situation uh, and why it has continued like this, despite the fact that we have had a new administration for the past seven years. All right. Thank you very much. So Nigeria has actually don't understand this. Understand that if the oil is at say about 80, and then you have it 
Maybe the budget of the country was pegged at about thirty dollars for a barrel of oil, and during the year it increases to about hundred. We have seventy dollars to be able to put in the market, which means that the country is actually meant to have a lot of oil reserve from that particular seventy dollars times how many barrels that they are exporting. But we have a situation where Nigeria has are exporting crude oil. It's not to be any dollar. We do not end dollar back. We directly export the Oil, and then we import finished petroleum products that's way more expensive than what we're importing. And we still have to subsidize. It means that because it's more expensive than what we're importing, we still need to give them some extra cash for us to complete that particular supply chain. And it comes to a figure of six billion per year, six billion per year. In the last five years, the data that drew about six billion as we used to be to import. Oil into this particular, into what um, finished petroleum products in this particular country. So, when you have 36 billion dollars going out of the economy to import products that we can refine, I mean, we have four refineries here in Nigeria, and we're here, there is a refinery that is down in the that they never. And we taking this 36 billion dollars out, what is replacing the 36 billion dollars now? Understand this too that if the government decides now that they will not subsidize this particular money that they are using to augment for the extra that I made mention of, it then means the price of oil at the pump, price of oil now, that's your pump price, will definitely go up. It will go up from the 170 or 160 like this at the moment, it might go up to about 800 or 500 because who would pay that particular $6 billion? Citizens will have to pay that particular $6 billion. So the massive exodus of Effects of the country because of petroleum is actually also affecting the so the scarcity of this particular product. We see we foresee a situation where Dangote might come to be able to help because of his refinery that is coming. So maybe we might be able to channel some of the products there and then maybe have a payment structure team that can benefit the problem. But truly, it is still a long journey ahead. Um, uh, one of the biggest challenges with uh, the Naira is facing is uh, the disparity between the the official rates of the Naira to the foreign currencies and the black market or parallel market rates. Why do we have the newspapers, the news websites, uh, almost everybody in the country focusing more on the black market than the official rate, which is a bit is way healthier, you know, in terms of uh, the. Uh, the the rate of exchange to the dollar uh, it seems to focus on the black market a lot. We quote the black market, you know, in the news. We quote the, quote the black market in the papers. We quote the black market. You go to the websites, and um, you know this is what people look at. But if you want to do business internationally, the business is done with the official rate. So what what's going on? I mean, the, the CBN moved from what it was before to the um, import and export. Uh, regime, which is the rate it fixed uh, you know, some time ago. So why do we have this fixation with the black market rate? The Central Bank of Nigeria tried to help matters by saying they're going to, by introducing a Naira for cash, uh, for dollar, you know, program. And that seems has not worked um, to a, a large extent. So what's it about the black market that keeps people focused on, on that? It's actually still boils down to what I said before. Policy and supply. So there's in there is also a function of time frame. You need this currency from the central bank, or this country this currency from the Apex Bank. You need to submit some documents to them that backs the reason why you need currency. Because that is the policy that the CBN are taking to be able to ensure that what this particular supply and demand factor is good. But you want one million dollars, or you want five hundred thousand, and you cannot get it that day, or maybe you can get only hundred thousand dollars from the bank. Where will you source for the remaining dollars? You have to go elsewhere to source for the remaining dollars, and because of the elite abuse of the dollar in this country, and some people that have polarized their economy, that inflow of forex in the hands of some of those entities, and some of them they have forex and kept. So they would have to sell it. Now, when they see that you are in need of it, definitely humans, greed, they will definitely tell you that they will sell it at a higher price. 
and they want to also make profit. They're in the business to make profit. So the supply not being available for the Apex Bank is a major reason why people are looking at what the parallel market and the time frame at which get it completed in the Apex Bank. And the time frame you can also source for it in the parallel market at a higher rate. That is actually one of the major reasons that what people are looking at. CPN actually introduced that naira for dollar incentive. Took it to an extent it's worked. But then when you see investors do not just want to fix in their money, okay, if you bring in all your money now, Nigeria, what are the most stable economic conditions that you will use to invest them? So that has actually seen a little go back in actualizing the fulfillment of that particular program. And that is the honest. Finally, the central bank has announced it will stop the sale of uh, uh, US dollars to the commercial banks in at the end of this year, 2022. Is that going to help the situation, make it better, uh, or make it worse in your estimation? <laughs> well, I do not see, I don't make it so much better because some people don't want to really declare all of their assets at one, especially when they got it through some means that are not okay. So they keep some of it somewhere, right? And then you see a situation where these people are not allowed to deposit that money in the bank. There will be scarcity. Sometimes these people are able to deposit 100,000 which bank money in the bank will use it to process payments in the afternoon or they will use it to process payment before the end of the day, right? But if they stop depositing those money, how will the banks be getting all that money? They want the banks, which is not still bad. Ideally, the function of the bank is to be able to give financial education to the people. The, the citizens, they want to be able to produce agricultural goods and all that. Okay, banks, give them loan. Let them go and produce. When they produce this, let them be able to store these things, right, to foreign and be able to do effects from it and then deposit that particular FX or be able to get that particular FX with you. So the experience, they are really trying a lot of things now. They have to try see it is not only um, pertinent to MFLA. So people can not see it. So MFLA is trying all they can, but there is need for better policy to actually regulate and make it. PDC guys to be accountable. That's the only way we can solve this particular problem and then ensure that the supply goes. All right. Dominic Romeo Riri, thank you very much for your time and of course for your analysis on the program this morning. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice day. Uh, Dominic Romeo Riri is a certified metaverse expert. Uh, he joined us live from Delta State. We'll be back with more. We talk uh, the security situation in the country. Uh, governor in the Nigeria is asking for uh, the permission to be allowed to arm his people. He believes the president will grant that permission. Shagun Shopito uh, joined